So this week has been pretty special. And the reason why is I was so blessed to be able to do a lesson with not only the ladies at Christ Chapel on Wednesday night, but also the ladies at West Central Prison on Thursday night. And y'all, it's just always so special um, when you get to go there. But so in our Wednesday night group, we have been having um, ladies get up and give their testimony or their story. And y'all, it has been so amazing. Um, it's been so cool just to learn um, the things that these ladies have walked through. I mean, some have walked through some really, really tough times in the past, and some are still continuing to walk through very tough times. But what's so beautiful is they've been able to share their stories of what they have walked through and that they are able to just thank the Lord and praise the Lord for everything that he's done like and uh, and what he's brought them through and the lessons that they've learned and um, just the healing that he's given them so this past week we really didn't have anybody down and so I started really thinking about um, about women that were in the New Testament that actually spoke to Jesus and or that he spoke to and I so I kind of put together a lesson of six different women and so we've got six days to Thanksgiving and so what I wanted to do is read to you guys um, the stories that I read to these ladies um, Wednesday and Thursday night so that you can get to know these women a little bit better and I can almost guarantee because I know I can um, that you will be able to relate to one or many of their stories and it's like we were talking about the other night like these women were no different than us. I mean, they just lived in a different time period, um, but they had the same emotions and feelings and um, a lot of the same struggles that we do today. So um, what I had the ladies do on Wednesday night um, was I actually had them get out their phones and look at, you know, a picture of somebody that they really, really loved in their life, whether it was their child, their grandchild, um, a niece, a nephew, a, a friend, I mean, whoever it might be, just to be able to get in that mindset and thinking of that person of just how much you love them. So I went and snatched this off my um, kind of office bulletin board while I go and these two are probably going to kill me for showing this picture but um, there's my babies which they're not babies anymore they're grown up and they got married this year and y'all sorry the dogs on the back street are going crazy right now but anyways so this was back in Gage's big hair days <laughs> and um, so this was at the beach um, one of our favorite places to be down in uh, PCB but really to I show you that to really get you in the mindset of thinking um, if you're a woman as a mother um, but you also you know if you're a guy watching this you could be in the you know mindset of as a, as a father too but um, so I'm gonna read to you um, in first person the story of Mary and now y'all there was a lot of Mary's in the Bible and it was a very popular name back then so the Mary we're going to be talking about today is Mary of Nazareth or Jesus's mom so um and I'm going to show y'all a quick picture of her because I'm very visual visual I want to see I want to see pictures you know so this is um from the chosen this is just a picture of her and this would be like you know that's the actress that plays her in the chosen and if you guys haven't watched that show I love it. Um, I, I think it really helps you to put yourself back in that time period and to really maybe be able to see, like, what would it be like to have been back there then? But, um, okay, so I'm going to read the, um, the story of Mary. So, when I think back on all, on it all, I can still feel the weight of the moment when the angel appeared to me. It feels like a dream now, yet it was as real as anything I've ever known. I was just a girl, barely old enough to be married when God chose me to be the mother of his son. How could I, of all people, be the one? At first I was terrified. Who wouldn't be? An angel and his message. My heart raced as I heard the words, you will conceive and give birth to a son 
and you are to call him Jesus. I remember thinking, how can this be? I wasn't even married yet. But the angel reassured me, and as he spoke, I could feel a presence of peace settle over me, even though my mind was still reeling. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, he said. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. I couldn't understand all of it, but one thing was clear. This was God's will. I wasn't just chosen to be a mother. I was chosen for something beyond anything I could comprehend. I agreed, even though I had no idea what was to come. I simply said, let it be. And with those words, my life was changed forever. But it wasn't just my life that was changed. It was the world. In those first years, I was consumed by the awe of what happened. Holding him in my arms, the t this tiny baby who was so much more than just a baby, I could only wonder at the miracle. He was perfect, yes, but even then there was something different about him. He had a presence that was both gentle and powerful, even as he lay there in my arms. I remember the way he would look at me, his little hands grasping mine. It was as if he already knew me, already knew everything about me. As he grew, I watched him change, but I also watched his power begin to show. His first miracle, turning water into wine at that wedding, was a moment I will never forget. It was a sign, even if no one truly understood it then, but I did. I knew that this was no ordinary man. He had a purpose, and that purpose was more than any mother could ever hope for their child. But then came the other miracles, the healings, the blind who could see, the lame who could walk, the deaf who could hear. I would watch him from afar, but every time he performed a miracle, I would feel my heart swell with a mixture of pride and awe and fear. I was proud of him, so proud, but I also knew that he was walking a path that would be so much harder than any of us could imagine. The day he began teaching, I was both amazed and afraid. I heard the whispers of the crowds, the excitement and the wonder in their voices, but I also heard the murmurs of doubt, the people questioning who, really, who he really was. Even his own family at times didn't understand him. I wanted to protect him, to keep him safe from the hatred that I knew was coming, but I also knew that he was meant for something greater. Then the day came that broke me, the day when he was arrested, the day when I saw him, my son, the one I had held in my arms as a baby, the one who had healed the sick and raised the dead, beaten and mocked. My heart was shattered as I watched the crowds turn on him, they didn't understand. How could they? But I knew. I knew that this was part of God's plan, that this was the sacrifice he had to make. I couldn't stop it. I couldn't protect him. All I could do was stand there watching him suffer. And as he hung on that cross, I thought of all the promises that God had made to me. I thought of the joy of his birth, of the miracles, of the love that he brought into this world. And I thought of the pain the pain of seeing my son, my baby, give his life for the world. It was the hardest thing I have ever done to watch my son die, to know that he was giving up everything for people who would never understand. But I also knew that he was doing what he had been sent to do. He was dying to bring salvation to all. And somehow in the middle of all that pain, I could feel God's presence. I could feel that the sacrifice was not in vain. When he rose from the dead, I wept with joy, but even then I knew that the path he had walked would always be with me. I had been chosen to be his mother, but that came with a cost. And yet, as painful as it was, I would never trade that for anything. To have been his mother, to have walked with him, to have seen the Savior of the world in my own arms was the greatest blessing and the greatest gift. And now, as I sit here, I remember, I remember my son, my savior. I remember the joy, the miracles, the pain, and the sacrifice. And I thank God every day that he chose me. Mm. And so there's, um, I'll actually take a picture of this. 
So, because I've got some of the scripture references underneath it, if you'd like to read um, some more about Mary. But um, I just love, I love every single one of these stories of these women. But um, hers is probably one of the ones that I think we all can relate to because as far as loving somebody and having to watch somebody that you love go through something that you don't want to have to see them go through. Um, but anyways, so um, tomorrow we're going to do the woman at the well. So I'm excited for that one, um, you guys. But until then, I hope y'all have a happy Saturday and um, be blessed.